has given. You are bringing back what is dead to life. He takes away the first that he may establish the second. The titan law is dead. The Bible says the dead shall be thrown into the lake of fire. He killed Malachi 3 that he may establish the second. So if they take you to Malachi 3, take them to Revelation 22 that the dead shall be thrown into the lake of fire. So the titan law has been killed. It must not exist side by side. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me what? Free from the law of sin and death. Join Dr. Abel Damino, the senior pastor of Power City International, as he explores exegetically Bible doctrine on tithe and tithing. Date from Sunday 14th of March to Sunday 21st of March 2021. Time. Monday 15th to Saturday 20th, 6 p.m. daily. Sundays 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. GMT plus one. Join the broadcast on Radio Aquibum 90.5 FM Uyo 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. XL FM 106.9 Uyo 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. daily. Unuyo FM 100.7 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Comfort FM 95.1 Yo, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Inspiration FM 105.9 Yo, 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. And Heritage Radio 104.9 10 p.m. till midnight. And also on Kingdom Live Network Station. Also live on Facebook at Abel Damino Public Figure. YouTube Abel Damino Ministries International. Twitter Abel Damino. And Instagram at Abel Damino. Watch real time. Host, Drs. Abel and Rachel Daminer. Don't miss out. Come on, one more time. Give the Lord a shout of praise. If you know that you're not going to remain the same again, jump up on your feet and give the Lord a shout. Woo! I don't know about you, but I believe the word of God. Hey, hallelujah.
salvation. Say, Jesus is my salvation. Jesus is my righteousness. Jesus is my righteousness. Jesus is my truth. Yeah. Jesus is my truth. Jesus is my peace. Do peace. I peace. Jesus is my peace. I believe. I believe. I believe the word of God. Receive revelation. Receive revelation. Receive understanding. I receive all. I fully trust the word. I fully trust. I believe. I believe. I believe the word of God. Receive revelation. I receive revelation. I receive all. I fully trust the word. I will never, 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 never. I will never, never, never be the same. I will never, never, never be the same. I will never, never, never be the same. With the Holy Ghost power, I never, 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 I will never, no, never, never, never be the same. I will never, no, never, 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 I will never, 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 never be the same. With the Holy Ghost power, I take on the shield. I take on the shield of faith. I take on the sword of the Spirit. I take on the sword of the Spirit. I live by the word of God. 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 I will never, never, never be the same. I will never, never, never be the same. I will never, never, never be the same. With the Holy Ghost, I will never, 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 I will never, 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 never. Redeemed from death, redeemed from sin, by the power of the Holy Ghost, it's your season to win. Take your healing, take your freedom, take your favor. Give the Lord a shot. thank you that your word is available to us this morning by revelation so i decree that everyone connected to this service this morning the eyes of your understanding flooded with light i decree that everyone receives revelation and insight into the word bodies and yokes are destroyed whatever is not planted by god is rooted out in the name of jesus Father, we decree and declare that this morning your people are built up, equipped, edified, and we decree that by the end of this service, nobody lives here the same way they came. We give you praise, glory, and honor for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Praise God. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our faith. There's a lot of noise on my monitors. You need to come here quickly and sort it out. Say these words with me by faith. Uh, I, am, I, uh, I believe the word of God. I am what the word of God says I am. I can do what the word says I can do. I receive revelation. I receive understanding. And I declare that I am anointed to do the word of God. I do not struggle to obey the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore, this morning, I will receive revelation knowledge. And I declare by the end of this service, I will never be the same. 
never ever be the same again in jesus name and every believer says a powerful amen we want to welcome everybody connected to this service this morning by way of kingdom life network facebook youtube twitter instagram we want to welcome all of you that are connected social media family brothers and friends on social media we are so glad that you're a part of this church family and every time it's always an honor and a joy for me to serve you the grace of god through the teaching and the preaching of god's word i also want to welcome the whole Bomb state community connected by way of comfort fm xl fm radio aquaibom you knew you fm inspiration fm and heritage fm what a joy to have all of you connected to the service hey guys get ready it's gonna be an exciting time of study you need to call a friend a loved one and ask them to tune to this radio station right now life is flowing through the airwaves our social media community like you've always done i'd like you to do me the same favor this morning let's get this word to the ends of the earth and you've always done it let's do it again help me share the video on your page tag some people call some friends you know invite some friends and of course make sure you put the video on all the groups and as many as groups as you can join join them and get the video right in there let's flood the earth with the fragrance of jesus's grace put the videos on monogram telegram and whatsapp groups all our campuses around the world what a joy to have all of you connected and all the bible study centers we're really excited to serve you the grace of god this morning Morning. So fasting your seat bells. We're going to have an adventure in the world. Are we excited to be here this morning? Can we celebrate the word of God with a shout this morning? Glory. Amen. Grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible, and you can be seated with your sweet, smart self as we get right into the word this morning. <clears throat> Now, as we begin the study this morning, let me quickly recommend once again these books. If you've never gotten a copy of this book, you need to stop by the book stand. And if you're watching online, you need to order for it. Money with a mission. Money with a mission. It will help you a lot with the things I have taught in the last one week. Money with a mission. The second book you've got to read and you must order for is Bible Truth About Material Wealth. Bible Truth um, About Material Wealth. You know, students that don't buy textbooks hardly pass exams. These are your textbooks for this particular course. And they're on, in the book stand. You can stop by and get a copy and read through the week. Read the books through the week so that the things we have taught you can resonate on your inside and can settle in. Amen. <clears throat> so we've been looking at Bible truth on tithe and titan. Bible truth on tithe and titan. And it's been an adventure a week of so much insight and revelation. Is that true? All right. So this morning we're looking at the believer and the tithe today. The believer and the tithe today. <clears throat> the question many people keep asking me, should a born again spirit filled believer in the new covenant, can he pay tithe? Should he pay tithe? Could he pay tithe? I won't answer that question straight because sometimes lazy minds want you to answer questions straight. Yes, the Bible is yes and no. Let your yea be yea, your nay be nay, you know, uh, in Christ Jesus, yes and amen. But sometimes you probably need to explain why it is yes and sometimes why it is no. In the book of 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, and we're going to read that in a few minutes, but just listen carefully. Oftentimes, we have different school of thoughts. Different school of thoughts. And you know, I keep asking people, why is this titan issue so controversial, man? This titan issue is very, very controversial. And it shouldn't be. Why should it be so controversial? You know, once you start talking about tight, everybody goes, bam. Everybody. Everybody pays attention. Why is it so? Well, maybe because it's related to money, you know. I, I think so. Because when you talk about prayer, people don't get that way. When you talk about um, uh, 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 the love of God, people don't get that way. When you talk about, um, you know, the forgiveness of sins, people don't really get that way. But the moment you talk about tight, tithing, whoa, everybody goes. Not even giving. Once it is having that caption, tight, it gets people's attention. And I think it's just because it's money and it's a very controversial subject in the body of Christ. All right. Now, let's take a wholesome look on the subject. A wholesome look today. First and second service. 
And it's important that if you listen to first service, you must listen to second service. Because if you don't listen to the two services, you didn't hear anything. It's very important. So let's take a wholesome look on the subject. Because most of us here are teachers of the word. People are going to ask you questions and people are going to learn from you. And a teacher of the word must be informed. Must be very well informed. All right? Now, so whatever position you take must not be based on sentiments or trying to respond to some people. Your position should not be to respond. Your position should not be sentimental. It must be based on the word of God. It must be based on the word of God. So 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse number 15. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse number 15. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Remember the scriptures here refers to Genesis to Malachi. And so it talks about salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Look at verse 16 and 17 of the same chapter. It says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto every good work. The first thing to understand is that the scriptures are inspired of God. The word inspired there means it was given by God's inspiration. We discovered that the scriptures refers to prophecies inspired by God. The scriptures refers to prophecies inspired by God. The types and shadows inspired by God. That is God inspired the building of the ark as a type and a shadow. Or God inspired the giving of Abel's offering as a type and a shadow. So in the inspiration of God, we see types and shadows. In the inspiration of God, we see prophecies. In the inspiration of God, we see types and shadows. Please listen very carefully. And in the inspiration of God, we see prophecies. In 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 10 to 12. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 10 to 12 referring to the scripture says of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that shall come unto you. Next verse. Such in what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that shall follow. The prophets testified. The prophets testified before time. They testified ahead of time. The prophets. And what was the testimony of the prophets? The sufferings of Christ and the glory that shall follow. In Second Peter chapter 1 verse 19 and 20. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 19 and 20. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. Verse 20. Mm -mm. Knowing this first. That no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. In other words, the prophecies that were given came from the same source. They came from the same source. Observe something. In Luke chapter 24 verse 44 in Jesus' first teaching after resurrection. Luke chapter 24 verse number 24. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you. Luke 24 44. Ernest, please check who is playing on that system. I need somebody serious there. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Concerning me. So observe the distinction which were written in the law of Moses. And 
in the prophets. Observe the distinction. The law, the prophets, and the Psalms. And they mean different things. The law, types and shadows. The prophets, prophecy. Ahead of time. Okay? Now, when you see the law, like I said, it refers to the period of types and shadows. Then you talk about the prophecies contained in the book of the prophets. They were inspired to, to talk about the things concerning Christ. The things concerning Christ. In verse 25, look at the restriction that Jesus used there. In verse 25, Luke 24, 25. And he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. All that the prophets have spoken. Next verse. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory. The prophets have spoken that Christ will suffer. The prophets, the prophets, okay, take note, the prophets have spoken. Next verse, and beginning at Moses, Moses, distinction, and all the prophets, different, Moses, the law, types, and shadows, the prophets, the prophecies of his suffering and the glory that will follow, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So he didn't just stick to the prophets. He went to Moses because Moses is not the prophet. So he went to Moses. So when you are referring to the scriptures, you are referring to Moses, which is types and shadows, the law. Where God said to Moses, build according to the pattern. The pattern which you saw on the mount. So whatever Moses built was a type, was a pattern. Types and shadows. Build according to the pattern. But the prophecies were not according to the pattern. Whatever Moses saw was built according to the pattern. But the prophets were not prophesying according to the patterns. They were prophesying concerning the sufferings of Christ and the glory that will follow. Please pay attention to that distinction because it will come in handy in a bit. That's what constitutes what we refer to as the scriptures. The law according to the pattern types and shadows. The prophecies concerning the sufferings of Christ. And the glory that will follow. So Moses is the law. Then the prophets and the Psalms grant salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. So all of them point to Jesus. Whether the Lord, the prophets and the Psalms. Now we have said therefore that Paul said to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. Study the word spudazo. It means be diligent or be eager to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The word ototobio. The word rightly dividing, we get that word from Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and 6. Proverbs chapter 3 verse number 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thy own understanding. Next verse. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy paths. That word direct your path. Is where we get the word to rightly divide. It means to navigate your way through. To navigate your way through. So he's saying to you. That you can navigate your way through the Old Testament, which Paul was referring to. And in navigating your way through the Old Testament, you can get the word of truth. You can get the word of truth. So, the word of truth is a navigation of Genesis to Malachi. The word of truth is a navigation of Genesis to Malachi. In Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 and 2. God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake 
in time past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in this last days spoken unto us by his son whom he had appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds. So we discover that in the types and shadows he spoke unto the fathers by and in the prophets. In these last days, he has spoken unto us in his song. So we find the types and shadows of God speaking. The types and shadows of God speaking. However, I said that to let you see that the inspiration of the scriptures is talking about the fact that the scriptures speak about Jesus. The inspiration of the scriptures confirms to us that the scriptures are centered on the Christ. That the inspiration of the scripture is the spirit of Christ. The inspiration of the scriptures is the spirit of Christ. Please pay attention. The spirit of Christ. That is the spirit that speaks concerning the advent of Christ. That is the inspiration behind the Bible. It's not just any inspiration. And that inspiration therefore lets us know that it is one message, one message, one content of the Bible. One message, one content of the Bible. The Bible is one context, one message, one content of the Bible. The Bible is one context, context, Christ, one content, Christ, one context, Christ, one content, Christ, and the Bible it is towards one people, us. One context, Christ. One content, Christ. Towards a people, us. Towards a people, us. So, that's clear in Bible study. In Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, Brother Paul points something very instructive to a teacher and a student of the Bible. He says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. The word of Philemos, advantageous or useful for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The word profitable means it is able to produce doctrine. The scriptures are able to produce doctrine. Reproof, which is part of doctrine. Correction, which is part of doctrine. And instruction in righteousness. The scriptures are able to produce that. And of course, you know what the scriptures are? Genesis to Malachi. So, Genesis to Malachi... When we navigate through, we arrive at the truth. That the scriptures are able to produce doctrine. Explanation that will bring evidence. Evidence that will bring correction. Correction that will bring instructions that produces spiritual growth. All of that can be derived from the scriptures. Genesis to Malachi. Are you still in the building? <clears throat> in other words, it means therefore, that at this point, when this was written, there was no book of Romans. There was no book of Colossians. There was not what we call the epistles. Not even the book of John. In fact, when this was written, there was no book of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Because Matthew, Mark, Luke and John were written after Romans to revelation were written okay so there was none of those books all they had in the church back then was genesis to malachi so all their teachings were from genesis to malachi what we call the epistles today is a compilation of what was taught from genesis to malachi rightly divided a compilation of what was taught to the churches 
from Genesis to Malachi, rightly divided. Are you still in the building? So as a pastor, you were expected back then to use Genesis to Malachi to teach sound doctrine. To use Genesis to Malachi to teach sound doctrine. In other words, that means Christian living in those days was derived from the study of the word from Genesis to Malachi. Are we in the building here? From Genesis to Malachi. Now, today, our work is lessened. Why? Because we have the epistles where the scriptures are already rightly divided. We have the epistles where the scriptures are already rightly divided. The understanding of Genesis to Malachi has been given unto us in the epistles. The understanding of Genesis to Malachi has already been given to us in the epistles. So, if I can get the epistles from the Old Testament, it means, therefore, there's a similar chord, chord, a similar chord that runs from Genesis to Revelation. If I can get the epistles out of Genesis, I mean, to, to Malachi, it means there is a similar chord that runs from Genesis to Revelation. Please pay attention. If they can say the same thing, one prophetically and one in fulfillment, that means there's something that ties everything together. And that's the spirit of Christ. There's something that ties everything together in the Bible. And that's the spirit of Christ. That shows there's a train of thoughts that flows. Now notice this. It says to teach. So I have Genesis to Malachi to teach. I have Genesis to Malachi to teach from. I have it for evidence as well. I have Genesis to Malachi for evidence. Then I have Genesis to Malachi for correction. It means therefore that I can give instructions in righteousness from Genesis to Malachi. Are we in the building? Mm -mm. All scripture therefore is for us. All scripture therefore is for us. It's advantageous to us. Sometimes there's a way people dismiss the Old Testament. And that's laziness. Oh, it's Old Testament. No, 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 it's Old Testament. We are New Testament people. Oh, that one is Old Testament. That's lazy. That's not dutiful. Because it's sure fulfilled in Christ. The Old Testament is sure fulfilled in Christ. But remember that in the New Testament, we have the better promises. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 5 to 7. We have the better, a more excellent. We have a more excellent. We have better promises. The New Testament is the Old Testament fulfilled. The New Testament is the Old Testament fulfilled. Which means the fulfillment of the Old Testament is what is called the New Testament. The fulfillment of the Old Testament is what is called the New Testament. Because the Old Testament was promissory, typical and symbolic. It was promissory, typical and symbolic. So its fulfillment in Christ the fulfillment of the Old Testament in Christ is what we call the New Testament. It's not like we have two testaments. No, we don't have two testaments. It's one testament. One promise, one fulfilled. So the new is the fulfillment of the old. The old is the promise of the new. It's one testament. We don't have two testaments. Old Promise, new fulfillment of the old. Is it getting clear? Yeah. <clears throat> One was given and then the fulfillment of what was given is called 
the New Testament. That's why the Old Testament was between Israel and God. The New Testament is now between is not between anybody. The Old Testament was between Israel and God. The New Testament is not between anybody. The New Testament is between God and God. The New Testament is between God himself. Fulfilling what was existing between God and Israel that Israel could not fulfill. Am I communicating at all? Are you here or you've gone home? Okay. Okay. So, the New Testament is between God and Jesus. Why? Because Jesus is the fulfillment of the Old Testament. Jesus is the fulfillment of the Old Testament. The arrival of Jesus retires the Old Testament. So there's no testament between the church and God. There's no testament. We are not a covenant people. We are not a covenant people. Leave all those things about covenant day of fruitfulness, covenant day of uh, protection, covenant day, all, all those things. We are not God's covenant people. Mm -mm. We are God's children. You can't say you are covenant with somebody and call yourself a child of the person. No. If you are in covenant... That's a different ball game. If you're a child of somebody, there's no covenant. You and your father don't have a covenant. You have a relationship where your father is responsible for your growth and development. You don't have a covenant with your father. It's a relationship. You and God don't have a covenant. The moment you introduce a covenant, you change all the dynamics. We are not God's covenant people. We are God's children. We are family. We are heirs of the kingdom. We are joint heirs with the son. We are children of the kingdom. We are family. We are one. We are not covenant. We are family. Covenant is between God and himself. And in that covenant, he stated that he will produce a family. So the family is as a result of the covenant within himself. Am I communicating at all? I will be to them a father. They shall be to me sons and daughters. That's been the plan from the beginning of time. <clears throat> once you start introducing covenant, you're going legalistic. Because once you say covenant, there are terms, there are conditions. And if you break them, you're punished. But once you talk about family, there is forgiveness. Because there is love. And love covers a multitude of sins. That's family. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. That's family. We are God's family. We are not covenant. I bow my knees unto the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Of whom the whole family where? In heaven and where? On earth is named. That's family now. That's not covenant. Okay? So just leave that side. Because the proof of that new covenant is sonship. Now are we the sons of God. Behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called what? The sons of God. Now are we the sons of God. As many as receive him to them gave the power to become the sons of God. Of his own will begat he us. He gave but to us of his own will begotten us by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruit of his creature. Whatsoever is born of God, born, born, born of God. You have the DNA, the sperm of God give back to you. You are born of God. You are of God little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Somebody shout, I'm a member of God's family. Am I teaching good this morning? Please stay with me. 
So what we are today, we are sons and daughters of God in Christ. But then we can dismiss the Old Testament carelessly if we are not careful. And, uh, you know, <laughs> but that wouldn't be dutiful of a minister. For instance, when we talk about meditation, <laughs> when we talk about meditation, we go to Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein how much? Day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according to all. Observe to do. That's law. According to all that is written therein. Then if you do. So then consciously or unconsciously we are not paying attention that the meditation is in the book of the law this book of the law the law of Moses to Israel he's not talking to you he's talking to the Israelites that were given the law and when we quote it as if we are referring to the epistles we forget that it's the law of Moses now, so we take that and use that for meditation. Psalm 1 verse 1 to 3. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sin, as no sin and seed of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night in his law. In his law. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. His leaf also shall not wither, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Okay, meditate in the law. Psalm 1 verse 1 to 3. The law of Moses. He says the law. So for us, what we do in the New Testament is we learn the word meditation. So we take meditation out and we leave the law for them. We are rightly dividing. We take meditation out because that meditation is the key to practice. But, but either way, that means there's something we're learning from it. Okay? We're learning something from that entire composition. We are not learning the law, but we picked out something that is useful to us called meditation. So that means from the scripture, we get instruction for right living. Because meditation is part of what produces right living. Meditation. To think through, to muter, to ponder, to roll over. To think through and through and through. Meditation. So we can learn meditation from that. Yes, we know that the law is a type and shadow. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the commas they are unto perfect. Meditation therefore is a practice and Jesus talked about meditation. In Mark chapter 4 verse 24 give me the amplified Mark chapter 4 verse 24. Mm -mm. Mark chapter 4 verse 24. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 4 verse 24. Is he struggling to find Amplified? And he said unto them, Be careful what you are hearing. The measure of thought and study. That's meditation. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you. See that? The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you and more besides will be given to you who hear. This is Jesus teaching on meditation. Brother Paul writes to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 15. Give me the King James Version. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 15. Meditate upon these things. Where did Paul get it from? Joshua 1.8. 
Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. Brother Paul will speak to the church in Philippi, Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are of good report, whatsoever things are lovely, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on these things, the same word for meditate. So we say, this book of the law, the law was given to Moses on Mount Sinai. To us, that law is fulfilled as the finished work of Christ. So I will apply my meditation to the finished work of Christ. My meditation will not be on the law because that law has been fulfilled by Christ. So as a New Testament believer, I will pick the meditation. However, my meditation will be on the finished work of Christ. So you don't dismiss the book and say, Christ fulfilled all. There are things to pick from there that are useful to the believer in the New Testament. If you just trash the New Testament, you will lose a lot acting that way. Now, so remember, we are talking about tithe, right? Uh -huh. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. Mm -mm, stay with me, stay with me. You will love this. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Next verse. For by it the elders, for by it the elders obtained good report. By it faith, the elders obtained a good report. Please stay with me. We can look away from Genesis and say that's just Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. But then he mentions Moses and David and a lot more people in Hebrews 11. And these were folks under the law. And the Bible lets us know that they obtained good report. Through faith, they obtained good report. Then he tells us again in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. That we are surrounded with a cloud of witnesses. A cloud of witnesses. So that means there are witnesses to faith. There are witnesses of the faith even in the old covenant that has been fulfilled by jesus there are witnesses now look at romans chapter 15 verse 4 let me begin this teaching romans chapter 15 verse 4 for whatsoever things we are written afore time we are written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of Genesis to Malachi might have hope. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So the things that were written in Genesis to Malachi were written for our didascalia. They were written for our teaching and the explanation that we, when we teach and learn from them, they will bring us comfort. So we don't just trash the Old Testament. That means the things written before the New Testament, before the epistles, were written for what? Our learning. Our learning. First Corinthians 10, 11. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 11. Now all these things happened unto them for examples. And they are written for our learning. The word admonition. For our learning upon whom the ends of the world are come. Referring to Israel and the wilderness to Canaan. The word example there is a very very bad word for examples. Example means an example like something that happened to them will happen to you. But actually the word there is symbolic. It is supposed to be a figure. They were written, they, these things that happened to them happened symbolically for our learning. That's the way you should read. They happened symbolically for our learning. All these happened as symbolic events. And they were written for our admonition 
or instruction. The word admonition is the word for instruction. Upon whom the ends of the world are come. Please stay with me. So we have symbolic things in the Old Testament. Symbolic things. Written for our instruction. Written for our what? Instruction. So in the symbolic, in the metaphorical of the Old Testament, we have things to learn. In the metaphors, in the symbols of the Old Testament, we have things to learn. Learning means that we have things that will be taught to us from those symbols. From those symbols, from those types. There are things that will be taught us from those. In the symbolic, there are things to learn. There are things to understand. In the symbolic representations of the Old Testament. So, we have things to learn. We don't just dismiss it. But Paul said, the law is good if it is used lawfully. You didn't hear that. The law is good if it is used lawfully. If a man uses it lawfully. First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.8 First Timothy 1 8. But we know, we know that the law is good if a man uses it lawfully. Teaching good? Stay with me. That is, if you use it the proper way, that means there's a proper way to use the law. Even today in the New Testament. There's a proper way. When you understand the basis of the law and how we can learn from the law, the law becomes useful for you. When you understand the basis and what we can learn from it, because they are given and they are profitable. The scriptures are given and they are profitable. Paul says, we can get doctrine from the scriptures. We can get reproof from the scriptures. Genesis to Malachi. We can get correction from the scriptures and instructions in righteousness. Pedia, which we, where you get pediatrics, spiritual growth, raising up a child by the way of the mouth. You can get that from the scriptures. You can get it from the law. So we want to begin this morning with lessons from the tithe. Lessons from the tithe. Because if they were written for our learning, then there must be lessons from the tithe. So the question again is, should a believer or can a believer pay tithe? Well, let's look at the lessons from the Old Testament on giving. We've looked at tithes, first fruits, firstborn offerings. Now we want to look at what lessons we can get from them. You don't just throw away everything. Uh -uh, there are things to take out. The first question is, should a Christian give tithe of his income in church? That's the first question. Now.